where livestock has to cross the sea and the fish has to cross the mountains. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're discussing 10 under-discussed countries from around the world. Have you ever been anywhere more beautiful than this? I don't think so. Moldova. There are a lot of Eastern European countries worthy of a visit from tourists. Moldova may not exactly come up in that conversation too often, and one of the reasons may be its status as a landlocked nation. Moldova borders to the north, east and south on Ukraine, and to the west on Romania. This lack of access to international waters impacts Moldova's tourism industry, and the country is among the poorest countries in Europe. However, this doesn't hamper Moldova's cultural richness or impact its glorious architecture. Gorgeous churches, monasteries, and wine cellars are just a few of the sites awaiting those bold enough to venture off the beaten path into Moldovan territory. Lesotho Lesotho is another landlocked nation, this time existing as an enclave within the borders of South Africa. This tiny African country is quite exceptional. Every winter, it is covered in snow. It even has a ski slope. It has an abundance of water, which it supplies to South Africa, a country which desperately lacks it. This is another country of various struggles, both financial and physical, since Lesotho possesses the second highest percentage of HIV AIDS prevalence in the world. The culture in Lesotho is also complicated, at least when it comes to sensibilities of the West, especially in its treatment of women. However, the literacy rate and primary education standards are among the highest in Africa, and Lesotho was even quoted by Black Panther director Ryan Coogler as being an inspiration for his vision of Marvel's Wakanda. This never gets old. The Faroe Islands The Faroe Islands exist in two worlds. On the one hand, they exist as a part of Denmark, However, the Faroes also operate as a self-governing nation, despite not being an official member of the European Union. This doesn't hamper Faroese identity or culture, however. Irish monks and wild Vikings were among those once brave enough to settle on these barren islands. Their descendants have achieved a high standard of living. Life here today is comfortable. This is a country for Vikings and warriors, hardy people who are able to deal with the Faroe Island's wet and often cool climate. It rains 300 days a year in the Faroes. At the height of summer, the temperature reaches just 12 degrees Celsius. And in winter, it's only light for a few hours each day. There's a fierce independence to the Faroese people, who balance their Danish fealty in terms of defense and foreign affairs with the monitoring of their own fishing industries and international trade. There's even an active heavy metal scene there spearheaded by bands such as Twir, from the Faroese capital city of Torshan. Bhutan Bhutan is a mountainous country located in South Asia, another landlocked nation whose name probably isn't the first one you might think of when it comes to vacation destinations. Living in pristine forests and valleys, hidden from the world for centuries by roadblocks known as the Himalayas. It's a neighbor to Tibet and shares in that country's history of Buddhism. It's also a pretty good place to work and live, at least according to Bhutan's standing in the Human Development Index. Everywhere you look, it's stunning, pristine scenery. More than 70% of this country is under forest cover because the government has mandated environmental preservation in its constitution. But behind this natural beauty and a world-famous happiness philosophy, this is among the least developed countries in the world. In fact, a 2020 study celebrated Bhutan's culture of peace, freedom, and general happiness for both locals as well as those visiting the country on business. Not too shabby, right? <laughs> Kiribati. What's in a name? Well, a lot, actually. At least when it comes to the island country of Kiribati. It's like walking through a minefield here. The rising tide isn't just bringing water, it's also bringing tons and tons of trash. That, combined with the thousands of people who are moving to higher ground, is threatening the little bit of land that's still left. That's because its non-linear pronunciation has a lot to do with this Micronesian country's Gilbertese language. 
Beyond this, the people of Kiribati celebrate music and traditional dancing within their culture, as well as athletics and a diet rich in fresh seafood. These are the issues that Kiribati people are facing right now. First one is water. A long droughts and no water to drink, and places where this, the water has been contaminated by sea surge or rain, too much rain or flooding. So we implemented water tanks. The government of Kiribati is also active on a global scale with regards to climate change, actively petitioning for legislation and action that would help minimize further damage and potential harm to Kiribati's ecosystem. One day, the people of Kiribati will have to leave their country. The government has already purchased land on Fiji to provide them with refuge. Vanuatu. We're staying within the oceanic region for our next country, the South Pacific island nation of Vanuatu. It is one of the last virgin paradises on the planet. The culture of Vanuatu dates back to the Melanesian people of New Guinea and the Fiji Islands, but was a victim of colonization efforts from Spain, France, and the United Kingdom. Vanuatu eventually gained its independence in 1980 and enjoys a status today that balances culture and tradition with foreign tourism and international trade. With just 120,000 tourists a year, this might be the Pacific's best kept secret. With its sapphire seas, affordable accommodation and welcoming locals, V marks the spot. There's a lot of farming done on Vanuatu, both of crops as well as livestock, and these farms do a great job at both feeding Vanuatu's people as well as fostering her economic growth. A recent international survey declared Vanuatu's people to be the happiest on earth. In good company, a perfect tropical evening, you begin to understand why. Come a rose. There's a lot going on within the three Southeast African islands that make up the country of Comoros. These islands used to be a French colony until 1975 and have not one, not two, but three official languages, French, Arabic, and Shikamori, which translates to language of islands. There's a wide divide between the haves and have-nots in Comoros, with much of the country's population sadly living below the poverty line. Political life is complicated in Comoros, with each of the three islands having its own president and government, and a rotating spot reserved for the union of Comoros as a whole. Then there's the Department of Mayotte, whose citizens chose to remain a French colony. It's a lot to take in. Nauru. Remote island destinations by design tend to be if-you-know-you-know -you -know propositions, and that's definitely the case when it comes to Nauru. It used to be called Pleasant Island, and it's another country that's located in the Oceania region, a Pacific Island country not too far from the aforementioned Kiribati. Nauru is actually one of the smallest countries in the entire world, with an estimated population of just over 10,000 people. The island has changed colonial hands a lot over the years, and Nauru was also occupied by Japan during the Second World War. Phosphorus mining has destroyed much of Nauru's land, and its history of occupation has negative effects, both physical and mental, upon its population. Where you have power blackouts, where you have only three, three hours of power uh, in, in a 24-hour period, where you have children who, who cannot go to school sometimes because the school has been shut down because there is no water there, because the power is not available. San Marino. The small Republic of San Marino is located within Italy and is the fifth smallest country in the world. With an area of just over 40 square miles, this country is Europe's third smallest, after Vatican City and Monaco. About 33,000 people reside within San Marino's landlocked borders, but these citizens can actually lay claim to living within a country that was founded by an actual saint. A sovereign nation since the year 301, their independence still fiercely defended. Yup. St. Marinus founded the country way back in 301 AD, while today, people living in San Marino exist as some of the wealthiest in the world. The country enjoys a tourism profile comparable to that of Italy, and also possesses thriving banking, finance, and electronic industries. Food, wine, and athletics also occupy much of San Marino's time, and the country enjoys the distinction of being the smallest country to ever win an Olympic medal. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Cape Verde, aka Cabo Verde. From afar, you'd think it were uninhabited, 
abandoned by mankind on account of its extreme hostility. The nation of Cabo Verde possesses a long and complicated history, including benefiting from piracy and human trafficking in past ages. These African islands were colonized by the Portuguese, and today enjoy a culture that takes from both traditions to become something uniquely Cape Verdean. In the 16th century, the islands were besieged by pirates and were a center for the slave trade. That was a long time ago, but the melancholy has remained. It's a story similar to that of Sao Tome and Principe in the Guinea Islands, one of remarkable growth in the face of problematic rule. It's volcanic in nature, uh, so a lot of the terrain is really rugged and rocky. Cape Verde was discovered in the 14th century by the Portuguese. After a while, once they realized that the, most of the land was not going to be suitable for agricultural production, they made Cape Verde their slave trading post uh, for the Americas. Cape Verde today continues to grow economically, inviting tourism from visitors, while at the same time seeing many of its citizens emigrate from the islands to thrive in American states like Massachusetts and Rhode Island. Are you a mojoholic from a country that you feel deserves more international recognition? Shout out your homeland and say hello in the comments below. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.